Hello, everybody, and welcome to Financial Insight. My name is uh, Clarence Chongo. I'm sitting here this morning with uh, Mr. Mchokoliso Tembo. Mr. Tembo, welcome to Financial Insight. Thank you very much. It's an honor to be here. I've always looked forward to associating with your esteemed institution. Indeed. Yeah. And uh, perhaps we could start by you just giving a little bit of an introduction about yourself and, and what you do. Please. My name is Mchokoli Sotembo. Among the hats I carry is I'm an energy consultant. I represent Afrocentric Energy. I'm also the current chairperson of the Electricity Subcommittee at the Ministry of Energy, which, which is supposed to be a liaison between the private and public sector in, in regarding electricity matters. Hmm. Yes, please. So um, you are the perfect person to have this discussion with. Oh, thank because you. what we You're would like to kind. discuss today is uh, the, the, the crisis that the country faces energy-wise. Obviously, the current energy crisis in Zambia um, has a number of causal factors that we, we would like to, to, to explore. So what do you think are the primary causes uh, for the current crisis? There are two or three, mm -hmm. I would say. Primarily, it's an overdependence on hydro, okay. electric power which probably arguably could not be foreseen 20 years ago, mm -hmm. but I think five, 10 years ago, we started seeing that our hydrology or the rains were not adequate. And as the economy was growing, we have not done enough to diversify. The failure to diversify is linked to another aspect, investment. Mm -hmm. The energy sector requires sacrifice. It requires investment. And the prices at which we sell power in this country, and most countries across Africa, is not adequate for it to bring private capital. Government investment or government funds alone are basically not adequate. Mm -hmm. So that's why there's a need to go to private capital. And you have people talk of things like EP IPPs, mm -hmm. independent power producers. This is where they come into the picture, mm -hmm. but there's been inadequate finance. Mm -hmm. The other issue I would say is government policy around what? There seems to be a belief on government's part, and not just in Zambia, many countries that the private that they will not invest much in energy. It, they'll leave it to the private sector and other mm -hmm. individuals. On the other side, the private sector is not coming in. Mm -hmm. So something the policy has to meet midway and find a way of enticing the private mm -hmm. sector to bring in their money. Or government should put more money into it. But if government does that, it has to forego other areas. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. this is the area where there's this mis this uh, uh, I would call it policy clash. Mm -hmm. Government has to drive this and make a decision. People also argue, and I do agree, the low tariffs, We because we don't charge our people enough for power generally, mm -hmm. we are unable to get people to invest in the sector. I see. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah. Okay, so um, obviously the crisis has impact uh, on, on people's lives and, and on, on, the, on the economy. So what are the uh, major impacts of this energy crisis on the different sectors of the Zambian economy and on, and on society? They're very large, mm -hmm. very, very large. First, people out at the home or meso level, people have had to change their lifestyles. They don't have power in the evening. This is affecting the social sectors, the education or the health. Clinics don't have medicine. People going to school are not able to study and that kind of thing. Yeah. But more importantly, industry is hit. Because industry, if you are load shedding up to 12, 8 hours a day, you're saying that your industry, and most of the industry relies on energy, mm -hmm. has to cut their output by 50% or yeah. somewhere there, yeah. 50, 60%. Those, the, the larger industries may have to shut, but some of them have got alternatives. They can borrow, they can find alternative sources. Mm -hmm. What about the small industry, the barbers? Absolutely. The saloons? Yeah. These small takeaways, they are really, really hit. So it has got a very massive impact. It also mm -hmm. means there's large wastage of food and other perishable items. So the impact is very, very large. So do you think it's likely that we could see a shrinking of economic output because of this over the year? So there is a forecast already that due to the drought, and partly this is impacted by the drought, mm. that yes, there will be a reduction in what was already previously forecasted as mm. our economic growth. So yes, we are going to see a reduction. And yes. a risk of recession, maybe? I hope not. But the current predictions do not talk of a recession. OK. Yes. Just a shrinking in the growth yes, rate. Yes, yes. All right. OK, so why is it critical to address this, this crisis, this energy crisis that we are facing? And why is it critical to address it urgently? And what are the potential consequences of inaction? OK, I'll go back to say you keep on using the word crisis. Mm -hmm. 
I'm told in Chinese, I don't know any Chinese language, but the word for crisis and the word for opportunity are the same. All right, okay. Yes, yes. Wow. <laughs> so what am I saying you now? We have a crisis, but we've got opportunities. Mm-hmm. We need to quickly fix this or else the economy is going to go on a down. Or people's livelihoods are being eroded. People's lifestyles are being eroded. Mm-hmm. So we need to quickly, quickly address this. The effect of addressing this is the economy will end up going into recession. Mm-hmm. We're going to lose a lot. And we're an economy which relies largely on la- a large industry called the mining sector. Yeah, The mining sector also impacts our forex earnings, our foreign mm-hmm. exchange earnings. So when they are hit, which they are being hit, yeah. you, can, you, end up have, you could end up having worse devaluation of the and country. And the, and the largest consumers uh, yes. for the power that's yes, generated exactly. in the country, mm-hmm. aren't they? Yeah. Yes, that's it. Okay. So uh, obviously Zambia has a heavy reliance, as you mentioned earlier, mm-hmm. on hydro uh, electric power. Correct. And this has contributed to, to, to this crisis, mm-hmm. stroke opportunity. Mm-hmm. Um, and what measures can be taken to diversify the energy mix, in your view, opinion? In my view, one, the tariff needs to be fixed. What seems to be happening is we're having a lot of interest but people are not reaching what we are calling financial closure. That is where finances to these projects, mm-hmm. these kind of projects, are willing to come in, put their money, and feel guaranteed they'll get the necessary return on investment. Okay. So, so when you say interest, you're talking specifically about investing, investing in, in the sector. Yes, yes, yes. All right, okay. Mm-hmm. So we need to fix that. I think we need to find an, find uh, the right balance where you can put in private capital. Because I think we have seen that the government does not have the adequate finances themselves. Mm-hmm. We also need, um, and I should be, I'm the, wrong, I'm the wrong person to say this because I am a person who believes that we need to fight the climate change. Mm-hmm. But I don't think the options talked about like solar mm-hmm. are the best options. Yes, it is helpful, but solar is not the most reliable source of power. We maybe need to go back and dig into our coal. Mm. It's, it's interesting that you've, you've dealt into, into our coal and other kind of resources like that, which is called dirty energy. But probably dirty energy is better than no energy at all. Because, yes, I was, I was just about to ask you to what extent the ongoing drought and climate change is exacerbating the situation um, that, you know, results in this crisis that we're facing and how these factors can be addressed. And you seem to be suggesting that we go coal. Among um, others. LPG, maybe? That, LPG, those, those certainly. I think we need yeah. to do a lot of promoting of LPG. Mm-hmm. There's a lot, a lot of myths around LPG and mm-hmm. it being very not, it not being dangerous, but I think we need to look at LPG at least for the heating, cooking, and that kind of thing in mm-hmm. the various households. Yes, yes. yes. And um, this uh, sub product of the refinery process, I think it's called heavy. Heavy fuel, oil, and all. We know, could look at that, energies. but right now, Ndeni is not in full swing, so there's okay. not much coming out of the, the, that industry uh-huh. right now. Right. Yes, yes, yes. What yes, about yes. biofuels? Biofuels? Sugar cane. All of those things <laughs> need to look into, but they are long term measures. But it comes back to the same thing I talked about er- mm-hmm. earlier. Are people willing to invest their money in that? Because the question they always ask themselves, I'm sure it's a question you, say, you would ask yourself. Yeah. If you've got 100 kwacha, you want to make 110 kwacha. But Correct. if you are going to say the price at which I'll sell this output is below 100 kwacha, then you mm. prefer not to put your money Correct. there. Yeah. Correct. So all these things, we, yes, we can look, go green, biofuel. Biofuel, for instance, is green and it can be firm power. Mm-hmm. But it's a process of, of doing, it's a good real process. Soil is also welcome. It has its limitations. Mm-hmm. But for the industry, I think the quickest fix really is we need to think of things like coal. Coal. Yes. Okay. Yes. Great. So in what ways has the energy crisis hindered economic growth and development in Zambia, and what strategies can be employed to mitigate these effects? I think you, you're just touching on those when you mentioned uh, diversifying into coal and rolling it out on a larger scale than what we currently have. Is there any more that we can do? So what else could we do? Yes, we need to not just coal, but look at various uh, energy sources. I think coal is, a, is the quickest win. Mm-hmm. It's pretty quick. Building a coal plant is much quicker than putting up a hydro plant. Okay. And I think to be quicker than managing to roll out biofuels. So I would look at that one. Maybe we need to promote mini grids, but the problem with the areas which, uh, what would I call it? The areas which are off the grid, which we want to connect, may not be able to afford the cost of mini grids. That's the mm. problem. Maybe at the utility scale side, our national utility ZESCO needs to find a way of discouraging uh or charging the higher end consumer slightly more, or mm-hmm. maybe even much more actually, mm-hmm. so that they can reduce their consumption and probably move to alternatives like 
gas stoves, solar geysers, and things like that. I think those are the things we need to be discussing. Mm. And another area which is related to the energy crisis is the high interest rates. If we could find a way of bringing in cheaper money and people should start investing in putting solar panels on their rooftops, mm -hmm. that would have a remarkable in uh, impact. The challenge right now is the interest rates are so high mm. that it does not become very feasible, especially under the current tariffs. But I think now that we've got a crisis, we really need to make have serious discussions. And I support a call which I saw recently. We, people need to sit down. We need to have an in -depth. I'm not saying government is not doing much, but there needs to be more a wider consultative process. People need to sit back and say, we can bring this to the table. We can do this. We are doing this. And maybe government should be told, I think here you can do things differently. And mm -hmm. government can also call upon private sectors. I think you need to come in at this level. Which brings me uh, quite nicely to the next question, which is talking about government policy. Mm -hmm. um, do you think we have a comprehensive and effective energy policy uh, in place to address this crisis? Uh, I think you're suggesting that probably not, and and to ensure long-term energy security. And if if not, what should be the key components of such a policy? What should government be thinking around and doing to alleviate the situation? The other policy which the government is driving, and maybe we need to move it faster and have an honest conversation about it, is the open access. What that is saying is that other people, players in the, can come in the market and sell uh -huh. power uh -huh. and use Zesco infrastructure. Uh -huh. So the framework of policies are in place, but there are certain nitty gritties, sub policies, which need to be mm -hmm. rules, regulations, we need to be put in place. And I think we need to have a quick question, uh, talk about that and go forward. And we may need to have a whole conversation right now regarding Zesco's role yeah. in the industry. Mm -hmm. well, that is to say, we need a total shake-up. Mm -hmm. Zesco needs to continue existing, but if you're going to bring in other players who will be able to approach the, the to deal directly with the consumer like happens in other yeah. countries where you can be at home and switch between uh, pro uh, service providers. Mm -hmm. I see. Yeah, we start looking into doing that as quickly as possible. But a, a key problem that will remain is people, uh, private sector, who are trying to lure, will not come in if they think the price is not right. However... Mm -hmm. If they do come in and people have got an option at their home of buying new, more expensive power against buying no power, mm. believe me, my brother, a lot of people are going to opt to say, let me buy the more expensive power. Okay, so uh, let me get this straight. Are you advocating competition yes. in, in, in the market? Yes, um, at generation level, yeah. at distribution level, yes. I see. Transmission level may be a bit hard okay. because you, it's an economical, but at the generation level and at distribution level, yes. Okay. So what you're suggesting, if I if I get you correctly, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, is that you 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 see uh, a potential solution is to have more power producers in mm -hmm. in in the market, yes, who then pump the same power that they produce into the 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 grid, absolutely. But at the the consumer end, I should be able to choose whether I want Zesco or I want Company X, which is coming as a new. Uh, uh, player in the market. Yes, and government is already driving that direction. Okay. Yeah, they're open, they're going to open access, but yes, to put in a few words, something like that. I, see. To, I, would, I am advocating for that, yes. Fantastic. I, for one, would be happy to have a, a other producers mm -hmm. so I can I can pick who is giving me a better service. And to most people, a, a better service is a service at all. If you're going to shut me off for eight hours and somebody is going to say, oh, I can give you power three times the, the, the cost Maybe for those two hours, for those eight hours, I'll buy power for two hours for a certain mm -hmm. purpose and shut down the next six hours. Yeah. But I would have achieved my objective. I see. Yes. Perfect. So um, what is the role of the various stakeholders then, including government, uh, the private sector, civil society, that um, have an interest and a stake uh, in resolving this situation and addressing the energy crisis? And how can they effectively collaborate uh, and foster uh, developmental discussions among us th themselves? Well, I think all stakeholders need to sit down and talk and look at things. If you ask me, I mean, there's no doubt right now that people will agree there's a crisis. Mm -hmm. And the crisis, like I said, it could be called an opportunity. It's an opportunity to sit down and say, well, what do we need to do? Government is the overall, the backstop with government. Yes. They are overall responsible for the energy sector. They should be the convener and from out of what they convene and their interactions, drive the policy and implement it accordingly. Mm -hmm. The civil society also has a job there to protect maybe the lower end consumers. 
yeah. in certain sectors which they feel need to have preferential treatment, they need to come to the table. But of course, they should not have unreasonable demands yeah. and find a way of getting it right. Private sector should also come into pumping money, but government needs to regulate as they are supposed to do through the Energy Regulation Board to, mm-hmm. to ensure they don't get super normal profits. Yeah. And there are ways of doing this to say, let them come in, let them make some money out of it. But the money should not be, I would call it, above a certain rate. Mm. There should be some form of balance. Monopo- the energy sector is by nature monopolistic, so it yeah. provides an opportunity for people to make very, very high pro- profits. Mm-hmm. So there the government would have to regulate it. So it's about all parties coming together yeah. and finding this solution. And while we are talking of this power crisis, but we also look at the fact that less than 50% of people in this country actually have power at all. Yeah. So we also need to have a whole rollout plan. What about the other 50%? Can you imagine they are living a life you you cannot imagine right now? They mm. don't live in power. So 18 hours when the sun goes in. They, okay, they so I see. Yeah. You mean areas where there's no electricity? Oh yes, and even that supply. needs to be yeah. So I think yeah. we need some form of master power plan. Mm. So we, we we have to deal with those who are not connected at all, yeah. and those who are connected, and s- subdivide them into various categories and see how you can improve the connection. But also, don't forget those who have no power at all. Okay, let me play devil's advocate here. You don't think that by increasing the number of consumers for the same energy that we feel there's a short for, that, that would just exacerbate the problem even further. If you simply increase the consumers without increasing the capacity to generate, yes, it would. Mm-hmm. That's why you don't just fix one problem. You have to fix the generation side as well. Mm-hmm. Yes, yes, yes. So mm-hmm. you'd have to also include increase the generation capacity. Okay. Yes, yes. So my key takeaways from this discussion are, one, uh, the tariffs need to be looked at to make them more cost reflective. Precisely. Uh, is number one. Mm-hmm. Two, uh, the environment for competition in mm-hmm. terms of uh, production and, mm-hmm. and supply of power also needs to be ad- addressed. Mm-hmm. And, and thirdly, that uh, um, the, the, the plan that gets rolled out needs to look at uh, one, um, making power available to everybody in the country, yes, having yes. that capacity to yes, be able yes. to supply to all, to all, but then also ensuring that that supply will be uh, consistent. Be consistent and we look at the capacity of people to afford that power. And I think one thing I didn't mention is we also looked at, we have to look at Zesco's role. Like I think I didn't mention it, but mm-hmm. currently Zesco is not viewed by many financial institutions as credit worthy. Mm. Their balance sheet has got encumbrances, I would use that word. Okay. And we need to start talking about how we dismantle that. Mm. Is government willing to put, take money out of the treasury and put money there? Zesco has done a good job in reducing their mm. debt, but the debt is still there. So finance are still looking and saying, do we want to go into this market? Yeah. So they, we need to have a total shake up of how we do and look at things. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. And on that very interesting and positive note, um, I would like to extend my thanks to you, Mr. Tembo for having this discussion with us here on the Financial Insight Show. Thank, thank you, you very much. Very much. It's thank been you very coming. eye-opening okay, and I appreciate it. Okay.